All right, guys, how many people are going to be – how many people? How many Aggies are going to be drafted tonight there in the NFL draft? Are we thinking seven? Are we thinking eight? Are we thinking nine? Are we thinking about 25? That's not going to happen. But let's get it close to that. Tonight is the draft. I want you guys to uh, comment below here on our YouTube show right now. It is text. Are you sneezing? Sorry. It's all right. See, this is what we do. We do one take, Jake, so we get sneezing. We get some – It's all real. It's it, real. It is a real, real show. We, let's call – what's the name of the show? TexAx. TexAx Rewind. Thank you very much. Presented by T-Mobile. And they want you to visit tmobile.com uh, slash across America. You knew that. Yeah. To learn how you get more value and coverage through T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Right? Yeah, you knew that. You knew that, right? Sure. The fan show guys are here. Guys, you guys are really good today. I don't know what it was, but you guys brought it today. Did you feel good about your... your... I really do. I feel you good did? about yeah, it. Feel yeah. Good. Feel good. I don't care. I mean, I don't you guys did. I don't care what anybody says. I can look at myself in the mirror now. So, yeah, be proud of what I did today. Well, on the show today, not only did we have these knuckleheads on the show, we also had uh, a little Aggie women's tennis. Tatiana came by, Makarova, and Mark Weaver as well. I like saying it like that. Uh, we had uh, Lance Zerline from NFL.com giving us a little draft preview. Appreciate his time on the show. Aaron Torres as well. Jim Schlossnagel getting us ready for the Vandy series that starts tonight. You can also talk about that one. It is Tex Ags Rewind. Well, I think the thing I've asked, you know, I've, I've asked from them, a lot, you know, before we went to LSU, is this, we we needed to show more competitive grit. I think the first four weeks of the season, everybody was kind of just kind of trying to find their way instead of instead of just you know playing aggressively and and uh, competitively on every single pitch. And <clears throat> so that's the identity of this team. Um, I thought going into the season we were really going to catch the ball in the infield, uh, and then we lose our starting shortstop and starting third baseman. Uh, so we've had some guys play you know, multiple positions. The guys play out of position like Austin Boast. Ryan Targos has played multiple positions. Um, and, of course, we've swung the bat pretty well. I, you know, I felt like we were going to have a really good offense if we keep everybody healthy. I, I, I did like that um, going into the season, and that's proven to be true. Um, but, frankly, these guys, have, it's just a gritty bunch, and it's not pretty sometimes. Uh, you know, you're up 10-3 to 3 on a third game of the series. It'd be nice to finish that out, but when you start your closer, <laughs> you know that uh, that getting the last nine or twelve outs is going to be an adventure, and it definitely was. But they found a way to win a ball game, and uh, that's all you can ask at the end of the day. And uh, and so you know it doesn't get any easier uh, any weekend, and certainly not against Vanderbilt. So uh, we'll just keep grinding and see what happens. How are we feeling about Trevor Warner getting him back out there, and just uh, as he has more at bats and feeling more comfortable? Yeah, I think he's. Uh, I think he's definitely feeling more comfortable. He played three straight days. So that that was good. Um, you know, the the ball. You know, in my mind, it's still not coming off the bat the way it was before the injury, but it's getting better each time out. And he shows some flashes every now and then, depending on the pitch, depending on where it's located. Um, and I think the more he plays, the better he's going to be. And 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 defensively. Uh, I think it makes us better, which is super important um, to a team and to a pitching staff. So we're just going to keep riding it, and uh, I think he's only going to get better. Um, and uh, he's super competitive, and he can run. So we, when he gets on the bases, he, he, you know, he gives us some things that we don't have a ton of. So uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's doing a great job. In the NCAA, Mark Emmert uh, going to step down or pushed out, however you want to phrase it. And then there's the uh, the group that's kind of heading up what the direction of the NCAA could look like, potentially transfer windows a certain way, maybe five weeks after the seasons or after the fall, after the spring. You, you, maybe scholarships could go as many as 85 for football, potentially. There's a lot of different things they're playing with. What do you think about some of, this, some of these radical changes that could happen? Yeah, well, first of all, with the Mark Emmert stuff, it, it was interesting because, you know, I don't know if you and I talked about this on air, but at the Final Four, he did a press conference, and it was just an abomination. I mean, I you know, the guy does one or two media availabilities a year, and, I mean, he just ducked every single question. You know, NIL, well, you know, it's up to individual states. I have, you know, we have no say in that. Well, what about the transfer portal? Well, you know, it's up to the school presidents. We have no say in that. Well, you know, at the time, I think somebody asked about transgender athletes. Oh, you know, it's the Olympic model. So the point I'm trying to make is, you know, everybody says, well, you know, how much can the NCAA president really do? And all I'll say is whoever the next guy or girl is, they cannot be worse than Mark Emmert. So, you know, what does the future of college sports hold? Obviously, you know, we don't know if, you know, 40 or 50 football schools are going to break off. We don't, we don't know what the future holds, but 
one, I, it, it was well past due for change. Then I think to your point, David, we got to make some changes to the way we do things. I mean, some of them are common sense. You know, I, I've seen, you know, each individual conference gets to decide how many coaches are on the field or, you know, whatever. Um, it always seems weird. You know, that that's always been one. I mean, I don't know if it's really that much of an advantage. I think, you know, you hire the guys that you want, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the scholarship caps. Yeah, the scholarship stuff, I think, you know, needs to be reevaluated just because of the transfer portal more than anything where, it, you know, trying to, you know, I don't know how to say it, but, you know, to, to, to manage a roster is more difficult now than it's ever been. So, you know, I, I'm glad Mark Emmert's out. I, you know, again, I don't know who's going to be next. I know they can't be worse. But I do think even simple things like that, it is time for change, given everything that, that, that you know, how much college sports has changed really in the last 18 months to two years or so. All right, you mentioned Kenyon going long before the Cowboys. So where, where do you see him going? I think you had him at the Patriots at one point. I did. And I, can, I can see him going there. But I also, my mock draft came out today. I got the text that's taking him at 13. Okay. And I think uh, that may seem a little high to people. But, I mean, Kenyon's a really good player. He's a really good run blocker. And if the Houston Texans don't take an offensive lineman at three, I think it would be a smart move to take him at 13 because he's an ass kicker. He's tough. He can play multiple positions. And they are another team that, you know, they've got a young quarterback. And one of the best ways to take care of a young quarterback, everyone thinks it's pass protection and, and wide receivers. And sure, that's great too. But as we just talked about with the Cowboys, running the football is essential uh, to helping protect the quarterback. And, Davis Mills, you know, the Houston Texans had one of the worst running games in pro football last year. So finding guys who can get people blocked up front is going to be critical. And Kenyon Green is, I think, the best guard in the draft at doing just that. So what's the latest with DeMarvin Leal? A year ago, people thought he could go in the first round. A couple months back, he dropped because of some of his, uh, his testing. Uh, where, where are you feeling about him right now? I think DeMarvin could fall to the third round. Um, you know, the testing wasn't great, and then the tape wasn't great. And frankly, there's just there's questions about what position he plays. I know he's played base end at A&M. He's played some, you know, along the interior uh, at times as well. But, you know, finding a position, he's at a weight in the 280s where he's not quite a three technique. He's not quite a – he doesn't really have as much juice as you want uh, rushing off the edge. So I think that's one of the concerns is that you don't really have a great fit for him positionally. And I think a 3-14 might take a look at him to play some 3-4 some defensive end. That might be a better fit for him based on you know, his measurables and his size. But there's a chance DeMarvin could go in the second round, but it wouldn't shock me to see him fall into the third because he just really doesn't stand out. And honestly, if he, had he gained weight and played you know, at his pro day, showed up at about 293, 294, I don't, I don't know this for a fact, but I think it might have helped him because to me, he needs to create a definable role. And I think that role is going to be as a one gapping up the field three technique. So play as a, you know, as an upfield quick defensive tackle, I think might end up being the best role for him on the next level. But I think that's the biggest concern you have right now is how do you play him? What position is he? And are you going to get enough rush from him if you have him as a defensive end? He could be a base defensive end. In uh, you know on rundowns and then bump inside as an interior pass rusher on pass downs. That that that's another way that teams could look to play him. So what's been the schedule since, and then what 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 can we see moving ahead? Because there's still a little break. <laughs> yeah, a lot of celebration on, on Sunday. Uh, I think we kept it within the team rules, Tatian, I believe. But uh, yeah, no, lots of celebration uh, Sunday night. Unfortunately, we had a little longer travel day on Monday. Had a few hiccups with the airlines and got in a little later on. Uh, Monday than we would have liked but yeah uh, Tuesday we took a day off we did a little light hit yesterday and light gym session yesterday but uh, yeah the, I told the girls yesterday let's bring our work, working boots today uh, we're going to get after it pretty hard today and tomorrow and we'll do a little uh, uh, in, inter squad practice matches on uh, Saturday uh, Sunday off and then yeah start Monday that's the week of the match we'll play Friday looks like we'll play Friday at one, and uh, we'll, we'll do the selection show uh, Monday at 4 p.m. And okay. uh, I have an idea how that's going to play out, but 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 you never know. I think most likely we'll play Friday and Saturday at 1 p.m. Okay. And, and what about for you, Tati? Like, 
athletes, obviously, at this high level, you guys are creatures of habit. When you're playing as well as you are, you kind of want to keep going. Um, do you need a little, you know, time break, or do you are you ready to get back out there? Honestly, when you when you're playing a season, it just kind of you're so used to playing Friday, sa- Sunday, Friday, Sunday, Friday, Sunday. So it's just for me, it's a weird dynamic of not having a match this weekend. But I also know that for us, in order to come come out and NCAA is strong and, and hungry and getting that title, we, we need like a time of like consistent work because that's like a week where we can actually like put in a lot of work in the gym, a lot of work in a, in a, on a court and have a little bit more workload than we normally do when we're getting ready for the season. Yeah. All right. The most predictable part of the show. So we've made this, you know, like like post credit scene stuff. So let's give the people who stay and watch. I don't know why they stay, stay and watch something to talk about. What is something that we can give them that'll just leave a lasting impression? Uh, you got nothing, dude. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you got nothing. Like a topic? I, no, it doesn't matter. Like sometimes we just say a word, like Boba Fett. If you write Boba yeah, Fett, yeah, Boba Fett. There you yeah. go. Are you right a Boba there. Fett fan? No. Uh, no. Yeah. Mandalorian. Obi Wan. Watch a little bit. Of yeah. Do oh. Obi Wan. Do oh. Obi Wan. That shells still. You got nothing for us? Nah. All right. We're, we're off to play Dungeons and Dragons. These guys are, not me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching.